small-town business owners Wyatt and Lance Bush team together to form Craven Customs, a father and son duo scavenging the web along with the Northeast Texas woods in search of rusty relics. While buying and building on a budget, they recreate and preserve hidden patina, giving each one a story of its own. Chasing their passion, they're giving the past a future, saving lost dreams one vehicle at a time. With help from God, these guys are turning rust. Brought to you in part by Maxed Trailers. Next on Turn and Rust, the guys kindle an old flame with a 1955 Chevy pickup. Having high hopes to finding it a new home, they dress it up with a little Turn and Rust appeal to seal the deal. Back at the shop, wrenches are turning to get the 1954 Retro Metro alive and on the road again. At the request from the new Denmark owners, this former forgotten yard art would be transformed into a pinup picture of patina perfection. Out on the prowl of small East Texas towns, they cross lines with a 1962 Chevy Stepside C10. Tracking down the owner, they're able to catch up on the history of this untouched, all-original workhorse. Will this purchase be a success, or are they just spinning their wheels? Following some questionable directions, past memories are sparked as Lance gets a lead on a 63 short bus that's just too old school cool to pass up. In the midst of Texas heat and aggravation, the guys fight to save the life of a 1959 BMW Isetta. At the point of pulling the plug, sparks ignite to revive the heartbeat in what hasn't ran in over 30 years. Feeling overly confident, Wesley challenges Lance and Wyatt to a little micro car competition. Each bringing out the big guns, they line up to see who walks away with small town bragging rights. Will he have what it takes to win the race? Or will this be a total rust buster? So we bought this 55 Chevy a little while on back from a good buddy of ours. Uh, when we bought this thing, I figured I'd be able to flip it really quick and easy. We've had it for sale for a few months now, just haven't had a whole lot of bites on it. I love the colors that this truck has on it, but it just doesn't have anything that really just will catch your attention a whole lot. So we decided we'd take it to our good friend Dan Shanks in Texarkana and have him go ahead and logo these doors up. Uh, we haven't really done a turning rust style truck yet, so we're going to go with some turning rust logos on this one. Uh, just something to add a little bit more color, a little bit more character on this truck, and uh, hopefully we can find a buyer for it. Where you going, man? Wait! Wait! Wait on me, man! Hey man, how's it going? Pretty good. Hot enough for you? Yes sir. <laughs> you know this Texas weather. Yeah, it's pretty warm. Well, hey, what you got? This is a 55. Uh, we bought this truck about two or three months ago and I've listed it online trying to sell it. I figured it was going to be a truck I'd flip pretty quick and easy. Like I said, being a 55, you don't see a whole lot of them in this body style. 
uh, but it's just not grabbing the attention I need to get what I need out of it. So, so I is, figured. Is this the one that we talk about maybe doing some letter known? Yes, with sir. The... Yeah, uh, I think I want to kind of do the turn and rust logos on this, kind of like what we talked about. We haven't really done a turn and rust uh, truck yet, so we thought it'd be kind of cool to. The doors are just kind of plain right now, just needs a little extra color added to them and a little character added to the truck. So. Well, I got something on the computer if you want to look at it. Okay. All right, yeah. Let's go. Then we're gonna we're going to uh, stress all this, make it look mm -hmm. all right. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It won't it won't look so um, so stiff once we put it on the truck. It'll have some rough edges mm -hmm. and and things like that. And right. And, uh, yeah. This won't be so stiff because this is just going to be a hand knockout stuff. But mm -hmm. this makes it easier for me to just kind of plan something and kind of get kind of get a rough idea. Right. And I might make a pattern of this and the ovals. You know, you need to make a good oval. Right. Because you really your your your. Uh, your lettering is not going to be any better than your sketch. I mm -hmm. was pretty happy with the design that Shanks come up with on this truck. Uh, it's really just a simple design, which was kind of what we wanted on this thing. Uh, the colors does enough for this truck to get the people's attention, but it just needed something to kind of push it over the edge to just make it more attractive to people and uh, just maybe find that perfect buyer for us. You ever gonna bring me anything that runs? <laughs> it runs as fast as you can push it. Don't stare either. <laughs> All right, bud. We'll get you done. Good to see you again. Yes, sir. I sure appreciate it. And uh, just do your thing. Let me know when you get it ready, and we'll come back over here and pick it up. So uh, might have a surprise. I may bring you a Metro to have your logo. Oh, up. cool! That'd be fun. That'd be so, fun. Yeah, I like I like doing those. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Thanks I'll a see lot. You Thanks. You guys may remember on the previous episode we sold that Metro to the people out of Denmark. Uh, well, we've got the thing up and running now, and uh, they've kind of are convinced that they would like to put some logos on it as well. They want something that's really going to stand out over there, not that the Metro's not going to stand out enough as it is, uh, but they want some really big, massive logos on this thing. So I didn't tell Shanks exactly what he's getting into, uh, but they're wanting some logos that almost cover up the whole side of this Metro. Uh, they want some pinup girls with their retro-style handbag logos on the side. Uh, we'll have Shanks kind of distress it to match the paint. But we're also going to uh, add a little bit of rust to the paint ourselves to so just give it a little bit more of a patina look. So guys, on the last episode, we sold this Metro to our Denmark friends. Part of the deal that they wanted on this Metro was they wanted it to actually be running and driving to get it over there where they can sell handbags out of it. Um, when we bought the thing, the guy told us that it was just had been used as a fence for some time. The front axle was gone out from underneath it. Uh, the motor had a hole in both sides of the block about that big. The rear end was locked up in it. So we were able to take all the parts that we took off the Mighty Metro and make this thing run again. So now we've got the new front axle put up underneath here. We were able to use the leaf springs. We've got the motor and transmission mounted in here. We switched out the rear end, got the brakes bled. They're working all good and everything. Uh, now we just uh, lack up a couple just running the fuel lines, um, hooking the drive shaft up, just a few small things. And uh, hopefully this, we'll get this thing back on the road.
What happened, man? Ran out of gas. We'll get you some gas. Well, folks, after getting her back on the road after who knows how long this thing's been sitting around, uh, she actually ran pretty good. The only issue that we ran into is apparently she was a little bit thirstier than we expected. So we're going to get some gas put back in her, get it primed up, and get her back on the road. So we made it about 100 yards up the road and we're broke down again. Uh, we were pretty sure that we had ran out of fuel on it. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But a lot of times these old tanks get rusty. When we put more gas in it, it probably broke loose some trash. And now it's getting into the carburetor, causing it not to run right, uh, backfiring and everything else. So we're gonna tear apart this carburetor and uh, we have like two blocks up the road to make it. Worst case scenario, we'll pull it home. Uh, but hopefully we can get this thing up and running and get it back to the shop. gas that we got in it. You can tell it's about to die, and it died. So apparently we, uh, we have a fuel pump problem. So uh, looks like we're gonna tow it back to the shop, unfortunately, get a new fuel pump on this thing, and should be good to go. All right, since how this thing's not gonna keep the gas coming through the uh, pump there, we're gonna try to gravity feed it before we have to go get the trailer, try this one last thing. So uh, we'll just, Set the tank up here, let the gravity pull it down in there, and away we'll go. come by the shop the other day who says that supposedly he found an old short school bus that was right up our alley. Uh, it's in a small town called Canton that's only about a little over an hour from us. There's a lot of cool antique stuff there in that town anyways. Uh, so he gave us some directions and we're going to just head, up, head over there and see if we can find the thing, see if it may be something that we know. Cool little Morris Miner. Pretty good, how are you? Neat little car. That's cool, isn't it? <laughs> hey, I'm Lance. Nice to meet you. I'm what? Wayne. Nice to meet you. Hey, man, you mind if we check out that old bus? Pretty neat old bus. It's a 63 GMC. Have you had it very long? Or? My sister bought it uh, with a business she bought and used it for a billboard, and uh, she sold a business since. Now she wanting to sell it. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of people look at it. Mm -hmm. Does it run or anything? We or? cranked it up, and we don't we don't have a title for it either. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a bill of sale. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why she bought it with the business. Mm -hmm. It's in pretty good shape, though. It's not all rusted out or anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a short one. That's what I like about it. We we kind of mess around with old a lot of old short buses and cab overs and milk trucks, and I've never had one this new. Uh, but it's cool. I'm trying not to show it, but I'm pretty excited. <laughs> this thing's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm assuming whoever probably painted it, it doesn't look like the paint job's terribly old. They probably helped to save on a lot of that. Maybe they fixed it back when they put that last paint job on there too. Um, let me see. Have you ever, do you know if the motor even turns over? It's not stuck. I know that a buddy of mine looked at it and said it's not stuck. But, uh, but it's 
been a while. The business she bought it from, I know it set out there for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know that I would. I mean, I I like to see if I can get stuff running when it's all there, you know, just to just to kind of save a little bit of the, sure. the history behind it. Even if you get it running, pull it out and change it later on. It's just neat to hear them come back to life again. Um, 5500. What about the little? Uh, is it a little Morris Miner over there? Under 1000. It's. It's complete. It's got an engine transmission still in. I've got a bunch of extra parts for it too. Mm -hmm. Asking twelve hundred on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a cool little car. It's different, yeah. It? Had to pull the front seats out, sit in the back. It doesn't have any leg room. <laughs> yeah. And you're at twelve hundred on the. What, what, will the Morris fit inside of this one? <laughs> Make it a little easier yeah. getting it home, wouldn't it? Would you do 3,800 on both of them? I tell you what, I'd do four grand on a pair of them if you if you do, if you want both. During negotiating on this bus, uh, sometimes it's a little easier to buy things when you maybe add other things amongst the deal. Uh, he had the little Morris Miner, which was a cool little car. It was nothing we really had to have or needed. We'd had one once before. I think it's neat because it's small and unique. Um, but heck, I thought I'd throw that in there just to see if maybe we could make a better deal by buying both of them. And sure enough, it worked out. We were able to buy the bus cheaper and the car cheaper. Um, so I'm, I'm not really sure what we'll do with it. Um, maybe I should have just bought the bus, but why did I even buy the car? <laughs> he may have took less for the bus, I don't know. But, but now we got a bus and a more smart. Could we do 3850 cash today? It's hot out here, so I'm trying. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that works in my favor. <laughs> Let's do 3,900. 3,900. If you're happy with 3,900, I'll do 3,900. Sounds good to me. All right, thank All you, right. sir. Thank you. When we pulled up and I saw this bus, I instantly remembered it. I mean, I've been chasing this bus for like three years now, trying to buy it. And uh, the people that I'd contacted to try to buy it from, they just weren't that interested in buying it. I mean, I'd offered them cash. And uh, the, the prices they had come back with were just really not realistic for us to buy at all. So to me, it was pretty crazy to be here three years later and have the option of buying it for cheaper than the first offer that I'd made them. I mean, it's pretty crazy. That To me, that's just how God works. I mean, sometimes we in life we get disappointed because things don't go the way we think they should. And here it is being such a blessing later on that uh, we're still being able to get this bus, but it's a better deal for us. Pretty happy that we were able to close the deal on this bus today and I ne had no idea that we would be actually needing to get this Morris Minor home as well. Uh, the record just didn't have room to fit both of them so we're going to come back in a day or two pick this thing up. This thing is a cool little car, There's kind of got a, a small following for them so we'll, we'll try to see if there's anybody looking for it but the bus is definitely something that I want to hang around the shop and definitely build the thing. Trying to get this thing cleaned up and sprayed off. It has a bunch of old moss that's kind of grown up on it. Uh, you can start seeing a lot of the old colors show through on this paint where you can really see these logos really well. And what we're going to do, we're just trying to get this cleaned up to where we can get new silver paint put over it just to disguise that. Because uh, she doesn't want these her logos to be able to see these old logos through it. 
Uh, so we'll get it cleaned up, get that silver put over that, and then uh, take it to Shanks where he'll do his magic on it. So now that we got this band pressure washed off, uh, it had a whole lot of loose paint on the side. Um, you can barely see the old Tom's Peanut logos on this side. Uh, actually on the doors, they, they showed up a lot more. You can actually see that they were five cents back then, which is pretty cool. Uh, like I said, on this side though, they're kind of hard to read. If you come over to the other side, uh, the colors are a lot more vibrant and you can actually read this logo really well. And so what we're doing now is we need to get a silver paint put over these logos so that when Shanks does his logos on it, you don't see a lot of these letters coming through in, on the in-between spots. Uh, we want this truck to look like the logos that we put on it was the only logos this truck ever had. So what we'll basically do is scotch bright over this thing, put some silver on here. A lot of these rusty spots, the patina spots it already has, we'll go ahead and leave because we're going to be adding uh, real patina later on as well. Uh, so right now we're just going to get it scotch brighted. Uh, get some silver paint on there and uh, get it brought over to Shanks. We've been playing with this uh, silver color to go over the old logos on this Metro. Uh, I believe I got it pretty close here. It doesn't have to be exact as he's going to put the logos on it that'll kind of disguise the eyes. And we'll also be putting, you know, the fake rust, the patina on it as well. Uh, but we want it kind of close just so it doesn't look just like obvious that something's been done there. Um, I've got this color here. It's getting real close. I'm just going to add a little black toner to it just to darken it a little bit more. Uh, when you're adding toner, you just want to be real careful just to add just a little bit at a time. That way, because the color can change drastically just, just like that. So I'll just add a little bit of toner to it, uh, stir it up, you know, do a little test on it, see how it looks, and maybe do a spray out card. Uh, but I really think that we're getting really close with this color right here. Uh, now that I've put a little silver paint over the old logos, we've kind of sanded through in a few areas just to give it a little bit of a distressed look to match the rest of the Metro. Uh, now we're about to load it up, bring it over to Shanks. He's going to put some super cool logos on it. Uh, the, the customer wanted a, a pinup girl with her retro style handbag logos on the side. So once he gets done with that, we'll bring it back. We'll uh, continue to distress the exterior paint of the Metro by adding uh, patina rust, fake rust, and uh, distressing the logos he does. And white go out into the wilderness headed to Texarkana to meet up with Dan Shanks while we're out painting so I don't even know. <laughs> we can do something stupid. And that folks is how you transition to the next scene.
Hey, man. Hey, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. Brought you another project over. I can't do nothing with him. <laughs> no, I can't either. <laughs> Got anything uh, made up for the old Metro that I brought you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of where we're at. What you think? Yeah. Can you, uh, on the on the font here, can you do that in a different color or will that be? Yeah, it's going to be maroon or okay. whatever. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I think that'll work right, about right. And the flesh tones are going to be different. Right. We're just... Uh, just kind of got a little model there to kind of go by. Yeah, so. yeah, that's definitely going to be unique. You add, you added the handbag there as well. Right. So, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's what is that what's going to happen? They're going to sell handbags out. Yes, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, she's going to set up at little uh, spots to sell out of it. You know, she sells American handbags, and it's um, kind of kind of cool selling American oh, yeah. handbags over in Denmark. But yeah, that'll be that that ought to draw. Yeah, that ought to draw pretty good for. Her. Yeah. Yeah, so she'll just set it up in spots and sell out of it and just kind of using that to grab people's attention and advertise with more than anything, so. Well, we'll see if we can pull it off. Right, yeah. Uh, the 55, did you, were you able to knock it out? Or? It's back there in the back. Got it ready? Yeah, we got it ready, yeah. Care if we check it out? Check it out. <laughs> Lead the way. All right, now I'm back. <laughs> it gave you any trouble? Uh, no, not really. Just, just trying to get that head painted like you wanted. Yeah. Uh, putting that on there. <laughs> yeah, that that gave it a little bit more color in this area. It just the truck was so cool with all the different colors everywhere, but the doors just still had way too much paint left on them. Yeah. So we we could we could spend a lot more time on that dummy head, but uh, we're gonna get out of budget when we do. So right. you know, trying to keep it like a rat rod and right, yeah, you know, and uh, yeah. No, that's that's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Just something that. Uh, that's just going to make this truck a little bit different than than every other one you see out there and um and in the meantime until i sell it you know it's advertisement for us so yeah and it's uh, not hard to uh it wouldn't be that hard to you know pull that off because you know, being it's rusty and all that if somebody wanted it they could uh you know they could bring it back here and we could change the head or change the whole change the whole deal you know mm -hmm. just just uh take that off add some rust to it if we needed to whatever you know right. kind of clean that up so yeah, uh, yeah that worked yeah, well, I'm going to get it back and get it cleaned up the best I can and post it back for sale and see who can't live without it. And yeah. hopefully it'll go to a new home. <laughs> That's, uh, I like that body style. The fact that it's a 55 really uh, adds, you know, a lot of value to it. Right. That first series. Mm-hmm. Well, so. you might right. be the person I'm looking for to buy. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you going to get this Metro unloaded? Yeah, let's, let's get All it right. unloaded. So you uh, like how that's placed on there? Yeah. You got the drawing here made uh, off, off a pattern, so uh, if you like that, I'll... Uh... Yeah, to me it fits everything proportionate, you know, it's not too big, not too small, everything looks centered, looks good to me. Alright, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and I got a pattern, these got little holes uh, perforated in there, uh -huh. we got an electric uh, deal that'll that'll punch holes in there, so it makes, it, makes it my job a little easier oh, draw, yeah. drawing this thing twice. This is just a bag of charcoal we got in a sock. Yeah. Works pretty good. Just kind of lays an outline when you take that. Yeah, you'll see when we take it off. If the holes are good, we'll see in a second just how good it is. We don't need much to see. We just need a little bit. This is not really perforated all that great, but it's uh, it's, it's close enough that what we're going to do is it's going to work out just fine. Let's pull it off and see the magic. Yeah, you can just lightly see it, but it's on there. Oh yeah. And so now we can uh, we can put this on the other side and and uh, have the same thing on both sides.
gentlemen, I hate to run, but we need to get back to the shop. We got some stuff to tinker on. All right. It's well, hot out here. Don't kill yourself doing well, that's this. All right. This is uh, this is just how we base it in. Mm -hmm. We'll go from there. It'll uh, we'll put all the detail in it, and surprisingly, it'll look pretty good. Right. I yeah. hope so. Anyway, well, it's already coming together. I can definitely see the pictures. So. Yeah. It just this is this is the this is the hard part. Your customers seeing this part of it is really the hard part. But mm -hmm. Once it all comes together, it looks pretty good. Right. Yeah. So, well, I know we've done this before. Never let me down before. All so right. I know I love it. So all I'll right. see you later, man. Y'all get out of here. Right. See you later. Well, unfortunately, we need to head back to the shop. Um, we got Shanks busy finishing up the logos over there, it's, and it's hot out here. It's like 102 degrees out here right now. Just super hot and humid. Uh, I love what I love what's coming out so far on it, and I know the finished product's going to be even better. Uh, but we need to get back to the shop. We're going to get working on that 59 Isetta that we picked up last episode. Uh, but first, we're going to go ahead and load up this 55. I love the logos on this thing as well. Uh, just gives it, gave it some character. And, and I know somebody, we'll be able to find somebody that's out there looking for this truck that uh, is interested in buying it now. So we'll get it cleaned up a little bit, uh, get it posted on the internet, and see who's interested. You guys might remember this 1959 Isetta that we purchased on the last episode. Uh, we haven't had a whole lot of spare time to work or tinker with this thing. I uh, haven't even really got to look it over real well. Uh, the story behind it was that it was parked about 30 something years ago because the brakes were locking up on it. It, it appears to be fairly complete. The motor's still in it, everything, the shifter, the transmission, all that's still there. The tires are obviously shot. I mean, this thing's still a project. Uh, but right now we're about to just dig into this thing, see if the motor will actually turn over, uh, see if, uh, you know, just what, the, what problems we might have to actually try to get this thing back on the road again. This is a little one cylinder, 12 horsepower motor on this car. Um, very small, uh, I've, I've studied up on these cars. It says that they got about 75 to 80 miles per gallon, which is really wild. Um, the top speed was around 45, 50 miles an hour. So you weren't getting anywhere fast in this car. It looks to be complete as far as I can tell. There's obviously a lot of wires that have been disconnected. Uh, probably rats been chewing on them and everything like that. So we're going to have to dig into that, figure out which wires go where. Um, there's some old hoses that are dry rotted on this thing just about everywhere. We'll probably have to replace hoses. Um, the motor does actually turn over by hand, which is great. That means it's not locked up or anything. Uh, the spark plug wasn't even in this thing, so it's kind of kind of ironic and, and, and crazy that it didn't get rust formed in that cylinder. Um, 
but we're gonna just start looking into this thing, get a plug in it, make sure we're getting compression, try to figure out these wires to get some fire and uh, get it a little fuel and hopefully she'll fire up. I can see all the wires that run down here to the ignition on this thing. The points are actually behind this flywheel and I really don't want to have to take it off. I believe that we can move just this open hole here and be able to get to them. A lot of the times they just get corroded up with a little bit of rust and just nastiness. And if they're not sparking, it's not going to send spark to your, your uh, spark plug. So none of the wires that run off these points are connected to anything. But I believe we can, we can figure them out, figure out which ones run to which side of the cool. Uh, go ahead and get these points clean now. Uh, the spark plug's brand new, we got that put in there. Get this thing, I believe this right here, I, like I said, I'm not real sure on these things, but this looks like maybe the starter was built inside this thing. Uh, so we're gonna try this and make sure, see if this is the starter, lets it turn over, and uh, just go from there. What we're going to do is temporarily bypass the ignition switch in this thing. Uh, didn't, we, when we bought the car, it didn't have a key anyways. And the wiring is just so mangled and haywired on this deal. Um, we've looked all over on it. The only thing that looks to be like it could have possibly been a place to connect a starter wire was right here. So what we're going to do, we just got some jumper cables here. We got a little 12 volt battery. Uh, we're going to try to see if, you know, hook some, hook some juice up to that, see if it turns over. Uh, we've got the points clean and everything, so then we'll wire in uh, to the coil, uh, make sure we're getting fire at the points, make sure we're getting fire at the plug, um, add a little fuel, and hopefully she'll fire up. Uh-oh. We got a we got a toot out of it. <laughs> hmm. Well, I wasn't expecting that in today, but it does run. That means it's a good motor, so it's a, that's a great deal on this car. Um, Obviously, there's a lot more stuff we need to get going on this thing for it to idle and not be popping like it is. Uh, but we'll go through that. I'm probably going to tear this carburetor off, rebuild it, uh, fix just the hoses to make it run right. But, I mean, this car's been sitting for over 30 years. I mean, that makes me pretty happy to actually hear this thing make a little noise. And I'm sure the car's pretty happy to, to know that it's, it could be closer to getting on the road again. Uh, so... Overall, really happy with today, with what we got done, and uh, can't wait to get this thing a little further along. Well, come on back, we'll take a look. Looks good from here. See if that's what you want. Oh yeah, yeah, it changed a lot from the last time we were over here. A lot of detail work, huh? A lot of time. Yeah, a lot more time in it than, than what it looks like. It's a, it looks put good. a number on it before you start. So, right. You know, anyway. It looks good. If you're gonna take it and do a little bit of. Yeah, we're gonna take it back and add a little uh, rust, uh, fake, you know, fake rust of some patina to it and kind of distress the logos and stuff a little bit to kind of, she wanted it to kind of look like they had been on the truck for a long time, you know, so we're gonna get it back over there and, uh, be pretty up your work. <laughs> That'd be fine. That'd work. <laughs> yeah. I would. Uh, I would spray that with some uh, clear flat Krylon or something mm -hmm. when you when you get through. Okay. Kind of. I kind of left it that way. Right. So you can go in there and stress it as much as you want. And, okay. Uh, you can you can get you an airbrush and whoop it out and do a little touch up if you need to. Right. But right. Yeah. It's not uh, rocket surgery. All right. Well, we'll get inside and get you paid up and get this thing loaded up. You didn't bring that much money. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid of that. No, it's good. Did you put it's, any money in the bag? It's all good. Yes, the money's in there. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, thanks thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. 
Well, we're at least one step closer on getting this Metro sent over to Denmark. Uh, Shane's got the logos done. They turned out fabulous. I really like them. I, I think the customers are going to like them as well. Uh, now we'll just get this thing cranked up. Hopefully it's going to crank up fine. It's been over here for a little while. Uh, get it cranked up. We'll bring it back to town. We'll add some rust to it. We're going to show you guys how we do our, our fake rust, our fake patina. Uh, and maybe it'll help y'all if y'all ever have a project where you're wanting to just add a little bit more rust to it, a little bit, you know, age to it. Uh, we'll age these logos where it looks like they've been on there for a long time. This time we decided to take a different route coming over to Shanks on the way up here. Uh, we were just trying to scout out the area, see if there was anything we might be able to find that we didn't already know about. Uh, happened to come across a really cool mid-60s Chevrolet pickup truck. Uh, it's a step side truck, super cool patina to it. Looks to be in pretty good shape. There's a for sale sign in the window. So uh, we're going to stop by there on the way back through and just see if we can find somebody around or see if that thing may actually even be viable. Hey guys, I don't know if y'all know this, I'm kind of a big deal. I knew I smelled the pickle. That's gross. Back in Tupelo in 1935, baby boy rocked the world, the rhythm came alive. Here comes the king. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Is it still for sale? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Lance. Bruce, glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Glad to meet you. Yeah, we come through here earlier and seen it sitting out by the road and almost panicked when I seen it gone. I figured it done been sold. <laughs> nah, I just moved it in the shade. It's so hot out there trying to get the air conditioning to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the AC hadn't been running years, so. Yeah. I think what it's going to need is probably everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The uh, belt's gone off of it. Needs that idler pull is kind of stiff. Yeah, it, it hadn't turned in years. I noticed it was a clean truck just driving by. But it looks pretty clean underneath the hood too. Is it? Yeah, everything. Something that's been in the family or? No, I actually picked it up in Oklahoma. It was a barn find, sitting behind the man's barn out there. And I was bored after work, so I'd go over there and talk to him about it. He sold it to me. I'd work it on it every evening, and he had these in his barn separate. Oh yeah. He had taken those off and uh, had done some work on it. He put some new headlights in it. Yeah. I put those bezels back on there. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, but it is a running driving truck. And yeah. 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 It's running driving. All, all the stuff works on it. All the doors work. All the windows work. The vents work. The glove box is gone, you, but uh, the keys that are in there, all the ignition and stuff is original stuff. The keys still lock the door. Oh, wow. So you can lock it up. Yeah. Which is rare. Right. It's a one owner original truck mm -hmm. from Grand Prairie, Texas. And, and so it's, 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 it's really dry. I've never seen one that hasn't had rust yeah. there on the lower fenders there. And, uh, yeah. There's it's not no rust at all on the truck. A little, like. little bit right there. It had had some hail damage. You, if you look at it close, you can see the hail, but it broke the windshield out. Yeah. So I put a new window in it, new wipers and seat cover, and 
You know, the varmints took over and ate all the wires off of it. It sat there for 33 years. Yeah. And so the, the rust, into, that's the way it looks is pretty much the way I got it. I shot a little bit of paint on there. Right. Uh, I started messing around and I should have never touched it, but you know, I'm not a body guy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's my body work. I saw, I seen that your price in the windshield. That as far as that goes, are you? How how well? I mean, as you say, it runs. Like, is it just movable, or would you would you drive it anywhere? Or? Yeah, I think you could drive it uh, pretty much anywhere you wanted to. Um, it'd be a hot ride, but tires are brand new. Mm -hmm. uh, everything on it's tight. It drives good. The clutch is master cylinder, brake cylinder is new. Slave cylinder is new. The starter is a little weak. The bending's on it. You know, every now and then it doesn't want to crank. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's a running truck. The speedometer does not work, so there's no time how fast you'll be going. But right. <laughs> I doubt if you'll get a ticket. Yeah. Unless you really. And these old trucks, you know, when you're moving pretty quick in them with an old original. You'll really know track. if you're going fast. Yeah. Well, what's your what's your best offer? Um. Everything's negotiable. Can you... I hear it run? Sure. Crank it up. Well, she sounds pretty good. Yeah, it runs pretty smooth. They don't ever get hot or anything like that, other it, than just the temperature outside. Yeah, it has a. Um, there's a new temperature gauge in the, right there on the dash. Mm -hmm. The oil pressure gauge. It, this, these old motors don't develop a lot of high oil pressure anyway. But right. when they're sitting and idling, it's low. But when you're driving in it, it comes up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got a new oil pump in it. Oh, okay. And uh, it shouldn't get hot if it does slow down. Yeah. <laughs> or speed up and hurry up and get where you're going. <laughs> I guess so. We brought some cash. Typically, we look around when we go places to try to find stuff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. So I'd love for it to work today, but yeah, <laughs> it just depends on where where you need to be on it. What I mean, what what do you think would be your absolute low dollar on it? Oh, I was thinking around 6,500. 6,500. What do you have in mind? Uh, like I said, I don't really have a whole lot that I can try to <laughs> bargain with you on this thing. It's a pretty cool old truck. Got plenty of power? Yeah. Yeah, it's a positive track rear end. It it does pretty good. It'll burn the tires off. Will it? Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what. If you'll do I've got six grand cash. You show me that this truck has a little fun behind it, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see what it'll do there. Still today, 60 years down the road, something about this record is never getting all that. Well, looks like I just bought me a 62 Chevrolet. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. Thank you. Well, my love affair with old 60 model Chevrolet trucks started when I was about 13 years old. My grandfather had a brand new 64 short bed Chevrolet pickup truck, had a 283 and automatic in it. I was soon to get my driver's license and uh, that truck was a hand-me-down truck. And unfortunately, my older brother got a hold of it before I did, and uh, I never got to drive it. So after he got finished with it, it wasn't usable anymore. So I've, I've liked him and wanted him ever since. Looks like traveling these back east Texas towns today really paid off for us. I mean, this truck is immaculate to be all original. There's no rod on these fenders. There's no rod above the windshield. All the typical places where these trucks normally rust out, 
this truck is still solid. The floor pans are solid. Seems to run and drive really good. Uh, you never know where you're going to find these old things. Uh, uh, I believe the guy said this town has a population of like 200 people. I mean, <laughs> the truck's as big as our city hall here. Uh, but I, I'm super happy with this buy. I love the colors on it. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do with it, other than I know it's really hot today, and Dad looks really good in this truck, so I'm going to let him drive it home. I come home from work, bring in some friends. Wind such a bang, make you up tight and tense. You're high strung, babe. You're high strung, babe. This thing was running good. I mean, it was getting down the road. We couldn't even see Dad's tail lights anymore. We come around the corner and there he sits. That's not good. What happened? Either it gets really bad gas mileage or I run out of gas. It's out. He, said he, it. he said it was full, but it's, it's bone dry. Yeah. We started cutting out about yeah, about a mile back down the road there, and I, I fought it up to Box Elder almost. Hmm. Let's pop the hood and see if it'll crank on something. Typically, I prefer to haul these old vehicles home, even when they are running and driving, uh, just because of this reason right here. Dad said their truck was running and driving really good. Uh, seemed to be he got a good ways ahead of us, and I think it may have ran out of gas. It supposedly had a full tank of gas in it, doesn't mean that someone might have stolen the gas out of it or maybe it has a leak somewhere. Uh, we're going to spray a little carb cleaner in this thing, see if we can get it to fire up. Then we'll know if we need to get some gas in it or not. Hot. Hot. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's out of gas. That's exactly what it's acting like. So. We have no gas can, no gas, no nothing. They're ready. Uh, I guess if you don't mind, if you just wanna, you wanna go with us or? No, I'll, I'll stick here with this. Uh, don't want anybody to steal my truck. <laughs> All right, at least you found a shady spot. Yep, that's right. We'll be right back. All right. Hey, ain't that that guy from Turning Rust? We spent 25 bucks on a $5 gas can. The guy gave us a tail light guarantee, he said, when we left with the truck, that he, he guaranteed it until he couldn't see the tail lights anymore, so I guess that worked out pretty good for him. Wesley must have been driving. It took y'all forever. It's hot <laughs> out here. We're trying to hurry. Wesley had a poop. Oh man, really? Send me the problem. Apparently, whatever's going around on these vehicles that's sucking the gas out of them, it's, it's very contagious and it's catching hold of everything we have. So it's going to be pretty easy to name this episode Running on Empty. We've been tinkering around with this little Izetta here and there. Uh, we've been able to get it run. Uh, when we first got it to crank up, it only run off the, off the carburetor cleaner. We'd spray through the carburetor here. 
Uh, we tried hooking fuel lines up to it. The carburetor was all gummed up with gunk and stuff. So we pulled the carburetor off, got all that cleaned up. Um, as you can see here on the inside of this engine, there was some, some wiring issues that we had to address where some wires have gotten uh, wore down. Uh, we had to go ahead and replace the points. They stopped sparking on us. Uh, but we got this thing turning over now and everything. Uh, gonna put the flywheel back on it, uh, rerun the gas to it. Uh, we've had to rework the pedals. They were all rusted and just not moving right. So we've got them working right. So hopefully we've got this thing one step closer on to getting on the road. We're about to try this thing out now. Um, the factory gas tank is mounted back here. Uh, the way it's designed, the fuel just gravity feeds into the carburetor here. Right now we can see there's an obvious hole in the bottom of this gas tank. So we set up a temporary gas tank above the headlight. It's just going to gravity feed the fuel into the carburetor just like the stock one would. Uh, we've got a, ran a wire ran to our cool here. Uh, we're getting fire at the point, so now we're just going to turn it over and see if she'll crank up and run. It's not even trying. One thing that's been consistent on this car is the problems that keep popping up. Uh, we, we feel like we make a couple steps ahead and then just, we make three steps back. We've got it getting fired to the points. We've got it getting fired to the plug now. We've got gas to the carburetor. It's working like it needs to be. Uh, but now a problem that keeps popping up is it doesn't want to turn over like it needs to. Uh, this doesn't have an external uh, starter on it. The starter's actually built into this unit, what's called a Dynastart. It's got little small brushes that allow electricity to flow through it and to let this thing turn over. Uh, I'm probably going to have to tear into it just to clean them brushes. You can buy new brushes for these, you can buy a new Dynastart unit, but parts for these are almost impossible to find. Uh, so I'm going to dig into it, tear into it a little bit more, see if I can't get them cleaned up, get it turning back over again. Uh, but while I'm doing that, we actually had our new tires come in. I'm going to have Dad get onto those to put in the, mounting those up. These tires on this thing were definitely not usable. They're just dry rotted as can be. Um, but maybe we can get some tires on this thing, get this thing turning over again, get it to crank, and feel like we've made some headway at least today. Lance had me order some tires for this Isetta right here in that, so I thought I'd go on out and get the, the white walls in that. and. Uh, Fix that thing up pretty nice looking in that. Uh, these 10 inch wheels and tires, boy, they're kind of hard to find, so hopefully there won't be any problem putting them on. On these old tires that after they've set for a while, especially moisture getting on them, they'll get rust around the bead net. So what I'm doing is I'm fixing to take the, uh, the wire brush, kind of knock off some of this rust in that so it'll seal better so I won't have any leaking around the seal.
They're just tins, but I keep them clean. We're gonna give this thing one more shot. It's extremely hot in the shop here today. It's like over 100 degrees here in Texas. Um, if this doesn't work out, I'm just gonna step away from it. I'm getting a little agitated with it, so I'll just come back on another day and hopefully things will work out better. Uh, but we're gonna see, we're gonna turn it over and just see what she does. Ready? Man, what's going on, guys? I miss anything? About time you showed up. Yeah, you missed it. Just cranked up. What do you mean? I always show up about this time. Man. I know, man. We've been working on this thing all day long in the heat, waiting for you to show up, and it just cranked up right before you got here. I promise, man. It did. Dude, I was just trying to get a snack. <laughs> it sounds good, man. It sounds strong. It sounds fast. Really? Yeah. You say fast? Yeah. I bet it won't take this thing. <laughs> You're all about that smart car, ain't you? Dude, 80 horsepower? It ain't, it ain't gonna take it. Man, this is this is old school 12 horsepower. There's there's pure power there. Why don't we take it to the streets? To the streets. I mean, race. Line, let's line them up. I'll race you. You want to race for money? I don't care, man. I got some faith in this thing. Well, you say 100 bucks and bragging rights. 100 bucks and bragging rights. What kind of like how, how long of a race? I'm thinking uh, maybe until we run out of gas. Until we run out of gas. Yeah, oh. this sucker gets 75 Dude. miles per gallon. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want part of this. This race here, I mean, I've got a Subaru 360 down there that'll yeah. last out last A Subaru 360? It runs off weed eater gas. It might take us. It's got to be the same kind of weight class. Oh, yeah, it is. Is it? <laughs> it's probably, it's in between these two sizes. Let's do it, man. Let's, Let's do, do a three-man race. Um, quarter mile. Quarter, quarter mile. mile race. Winner 100 bucks and bragging rights. Let's do it, man. All right, man. Shake on it. You want to do it? Yeah. It's on me. That was an interesting ride. I never got the thing out of first gear because the brakes still ain't working on it, but I made it to the car wash. Uh, this thing run pretty good for what it was. I didn't think we were gonna get there today. Super happy to get it running again. Now just gonna knock this 30 year old dust off the thing.
Surprisingly, I'm really happy the way this project's turned out. I mean, it got a little aggravating and a little confusing here and there, but now she seems to be running great. Uh, she shifted fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure that after we blew the dust off of it, it might be a little bit faster, and I, I think I might be able to give Wesley and Dad a run for the money. Now that we got this short bus back to the shop, we kind of dug into it and uh, the guy wasn't sure if it would run or not. It looked like it should. It's got a really big V6 in it and it's kind of a strange design. The, the spark plugs actually come straight up by the intake rather than coming out of the side of the heads, which is kind of weird. I've never seen this setup before. Um, we put a battery on it. It turned over. It wasn't locked up or anything. We had to put a coil on it in order for it to get fire again put a little, car, a little gas in the carburetor and it actually cranked up and idled. Um, we dug into a little deeper and found out that the master cylinder was out on it, got that replaced. Now it looks like the clutch slave cylinder isn't working. It looks like the, the little plunger part on it might be rusted up. So we've got a product we use called Evapo Rust on, on cases like this. It's a really good cleaning agent and it cleans the, the rust off of it. We're gonna pull that slave cylinder off, let it soak in that Evapo Rust. Hopefully that'll save us a little money and get this thing where the clutch is working on it. So the current situation on the short bus is that we have a problem with a stuck slave cylinder. Um, these, these slave cylinders have a piston down in here and uh, I don't know if you can tell but this thing is just rusted up solid and it won't allow the piston to move in and out that it engages and disengages the clutch. Um, what we have here is a product called EvapoRust. We've used it around the shop just about on everything. I've never used it on something like this. Uh, but what it is, is it's, it's really simple to use. It works really well. Uh, you just drop something in there. If it's really rusty, it's safe on your hands. It's safe on plastics. Uh, you just let it set in there for a couple hours and it'll clean it almost down to just the bare metal. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to let this thing soak in there for a little bit, uh, come back, and hopefully it'll loosen all that rust up, clean it up, where it'll get on the vehicle and be working good for us again. So it's just been a little over a couple hours of letting this thing soak in this evapo rust, And you can already tell, I mean, this stuff works miracles. Uh, it stripped all the old grease and grime off of it. The cylinder in here is just as smooth as can be. Before you could rub your finger in there and it was just really coarse where that rust had uh, built up. Uh, and that was allowing this, this piston that pushed out the rod to engage the clutch. It just couldn't move because it built up that rust. I mean, this thing is just as smooth as the inside of a cylinder wall now. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just clean it up a little bit, uh, dry it off. Um, you rinse it off with some just water and dip it back in there and that kind of will neutralize it from rusting again. Uh, but we'll get it cleaned up, get some paint on it, put it on that bus and get that clutch working. Okay, go ahead and pop it. Alright. That's good. Lance? Yes, sir. My name's Tom. Nice to meet you, Tom. I just saw a Boris Miner guy said you belong to it down south of Sulphur Springs. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, kind of mine. I hadn't picked it up yet. I bought it whenever I bought this old school bus, actually, and need to go pick it up. But uh, 
Yeah, that's that's mine. Are you interested pretty, in it? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Boy, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I've been chasing after this thing for about three years now, and finally got my hands on it. And the little Morris was kind of just a a bonus when we got over there. So I had one of those about 40 years ago. Two yeah. door. Yeah. And I never got it run. Didn't have the money to do it then. But uh, yeah, I'd be interested in it. Yeah. I don't know a whole lot about the car. Uh, I know he said there was a ton of parts inside of it. I kind of looked over it about five minutes while we were there. Uh, I don't know. I know the motor and stuff's in it, but I don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, yeah, I kind of looked it over. I was curious whatever else was in it. But anyway, I, I, I wouldn't mind having it. Yeah. Um, well, normally I like to try to get them running and see what I, you know, try to get the most out of it and everything. Uh, you have any idea what something like that would be worth to you? No idea? Grand? <laughs> thousand? Uh, see, I, I bundled those things together when I bought them. Uh, you do uh, watch American Pickles or something. <laughs> well, it works, so. <laughs> well, I understand, I understand. Uh, I'm trying to think back of what I got into that car. I don't think a thousand's going to get me where I need to be on it. I'd really rather try to... Would you willing to buy it right there on the spot? Right or? there. I'll pick it up right there. They don't need, don't need you moving it around. Right. Um, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about the car. Uh, he assumed it would run and everything, but uh, that'd be something you'd have to that'd just dig my, into and everything. Uh, I'd really... Really, for me to feel comfortable, I'd need to be around 1600 on it, though. I think you tracked me down, so I know you're. <laughs> I know you gotta be interested in it. Yeah, but I'm. I'm hiding out from work. <laughs> I'm supposed to be at work. Yeah. Fourteen. Fourteen. Cab. Now. You I'll don't do have it. to go get. All right, buddy. I I'll do that. Yeah, that'll work, it. man. My name's Tom O'Leary. I just bought the little Morris Miner. Uh, had one about 40 years ago, but. Basically, my plan is to clean it up and try to get it running just like it is, and maybe someday in the in the future paint it. But uh, I don't really want to alter it much at all. I just like to put it back just like it is. So it's a pretty cool little old car. They're simple. Seems to be running pretty good. We got some stuff kind of temporarily rigged for now. The, the new coil just sitting in place and we're just running off a little external gas tank there. Uh, but now that we've got this clutch sleigh cylinder on there, it seems to be working well. Uh, let's get this thing on the road. Well, I feel like today has been a success. This thing runs, it drives, uh, the clutch is working good on it. You know, the guy told us that this thing's been setting up for 15 years. He had no idea if it ran. Uh, we've worked on it for a few hours today and got it running, driving, and everything. Uh, to top it off, had someone come by and buy the Morris Miner. I uh, wasn't really sure why I even bought that car anyways, uh, but that turned out to be a great blessing as well. So all in all, pretty happy day. Now that 
we got this Retro Metro back at the shop here. Uh, I've been playing around with the rust on this thing. This is all paint right here. Uh, the customer decided that they wanted this thing to just look old, rugged, and worn out. And that's where we're trying to get with this thing. I'm still working on the front here. And we decided we'd go ahead and show you guys how we're doing it. Um, but for right now, we've got the logos here that Shanks did. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start distressing them. I'm going to show you how we do that to make them just look a little aged, chipped up, scratched up, stuff like that. Uh, the customer decided that she wanted to put door logos on this as well. Uh, so we got a pretty cool design worked up. We're going to paint that on there now. Uh, we'll distress it as well. And then we'll start showing you kind of how we do the rust around here. And, uh, and hopefully it'll help you all out. So when you're dealing with these uh, patina style paint jobs, you know, the object of the game is for them to look rough, to look worn out and everything. Uh, but when you're prepping for them, when you're trying to do them, you take every step like you would on a normal paint job. Uh, so now I've got this door scotch brighted so the logos will stick well. Uh, I've just got some wax and grease remover here. You can pick it up just about at any uh, automotive store around here. Um, I'm just going to wipe it down, clean it up real good. We've got three separate patterns here we'll lay out for the logos, uh, get them painted on, and move on to the next thing. So that's just a, like a starting, uh, just getting them set up on there just to have an idea of where stuff needs to be placed. Uh, it looks like I want to raise the bag up just a little bit more and uh, the handbags is a little off center to me. So we'll get a tape measure a hold of it. We just kind of have an idea of where we want everything now. So we'll get a tape measure, get everything centered uh, height wise, width wise, and stick them things on there. We've got these decals put on the truck now. Um, when we were pulling the outer layer off, it peeled a little bit of this paint that's on the Metro here. Um, it'll probably actually work in our favor because it just kind of adds to the patina of this thing. So once we paint on here, we'll be using a single stage paint and I'll brush it on there. Uh, the reason why I'll brush it on there is because it'll be easier when we go to distress it to make it look aged. Uh, you'll see the brush marks in it where if you was to spray it, um, it's just going to be harder to distress. It's just going to all come off at once. So we're going to mix up a little bit of single stage. It's just a two-part paint that's got a hardener in it. Um, we'll brush it on there. We'll pull, peel these off, let it dry good, and then we'll come back and distress it. On the letters of this thing, we're just going to use a, just a standard black on it. Um, we're using some uh, two-part urethane paint. Uh, it mixes eight to one with a hardener. Uh, normally, you put a little bit of reducer in there if you were going to spray it through a gun. Uh, but I've just got it mixed with the hardener here. I'm just going to use a standard, just a little inch and a half brush to paint it on there with. Um, you don't glob the stuff on there. Just kind of go easy with it with the light coat at first and then, uh, and then follow it up with another coat. And keep in mind when you're doing these things, if you're looking for like an old distressed age look, a lot of the times the paint's already going to be missing. It's going to be a little bit thinner than it needs to be anyways. So just keep that in mind when you're applying this stuff to kind of, to kind of hold back on the paint or to kind of give it just an old weathered look. mixing up the red that we're going to use on this handbag here. Uh, we kind of went with a maroon color to match the retro style logo there. Um, it'll be the same concept as we did on the font. Uh, same paint, same mixing ratio. I use a little bit different brush here. Uh, I'll kind of go around the edges a little darker. Uh, just how Shanks did on his, lo on his logos. The center will be a little bit brushed a little thinner just so it looks a little aged. 
Um, as you can tell here, when we peeled the sticker off in some of these areas, it took some more paint off of it. Uh, it never fails. You try to prep these things just right and something like this will happen. Uh, but it's not a big deal at all. We'll go back. I can feather that all out, uh, get it where it's going to be good and staying on there. And it'll actually probably work out for our benefit uh, because it's going to add just an extra layer in our patina there. We've got these logos done now and basically we've got as far as we can get on them until the paint dries. Uh, we'll come back and distress them once that's good and dry. Uh, now we've got these logos here though, we'll go back and I'm going to show you all how we distress them. Uh, we just use a little bit of acetone, it kind of softens the paint, makes it come off. And I've got a really rough uh, scotch bright here, it just makes it, I mean you can use a regular scotch bright. Um, and, and the trick really is just kind of getting that acetone on there, getting a layer on it, let it set for just a second, and then that paint will come off a little easier. And this, it's really, you gotta be really careful in this area because you can take it off too much, or you could spend a lot of time and not get it off just right. So you're just gonna have to play around with it and, and uh, just see what you like the best. When you go to do this, pick you a point that's kind of low or kind of small. Just test a little area just to see how it works, just to get used to it. Uh, I'm going to start down here on her leg and just kind of work my way up, and then I'll come back to do the letters there at the end. Um, but basically, you just kind of get the, like I said, get the pad a little, little wet, kind of let it wipe on there, the set. And it doesn't take much force just to, just to start scratching at it. You can see it's starting to come off there. and. Uh, just play around with it, take it off where you think it needs it, leave it where you think it needs it, and just do the best you can. So basically you just keep scuffing around on it until you get a desired look like you're wanting. Uh, she wanted this thing to be really rusty, really aged look, like it'd been on there for a while. Uh, so I'm going a little extra further on this one here. Uh, we'll just keep, keep aging it all, uh, hit it with some flat clear after that, and then we'll begin our, our rust process. How you doing, sir? Hey, man. What are you up to? <laughs> what are you up to? I'm about to throw some rust on this old metro here. It's looking just, pretty sharp. Yeah, just distress the logos a little bit, scotch brighten it up, and start the rust process on it. So she wanted it to look look worse than what it did. So that's where my <laughs> that's where I come in. One of these days, I'm gonna send you one of my shop trucks and let you hook it up. Yeah, yeah it's fun, man. I love doing it. Speaking of shop trucks, man. You know, we do the interiors over here next door to you in Deepport. Mm -hmm. Well, we just finished up a guy, and that's part of my payment, but I've already owned it once. I can't take it back home again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you might uh, be interested. So you've seen in a spot, an empty spot over here, huh? I was hoping you might be interested <laughs> in taking it off our hands, man. What is that, 65? Not sure. Not 100% sure. Unibody, though. I originally picked that up from a guy in Dallas about seven years ago mm -hmm. and traded it off to one of my customers. Done another car for him mm -hmm. down here at uh, the shop and he's conned me into taking it back. So, yeah. My anniversary's tomorrow. I'm kind of scared <laughs> to take it home. Yeah, I know how that goes. He's you got, got a, a few hood extra or parts. anything for it? Yeah, he's got a few extra doors there. Got a hood in the back of the truck. Oh, okay. It's not 100% banged up. It does come with a lot of bugs. <laughs> you got some ants. Yeah, little Texas fire ants. You know what you need to get out of the thing. 
I'd like to have about 500 or whatever you can come off of. Yeah. Um, Maybe a little less. I don't have a title on it. Yeah. I don't typically deal with a whole lot of Fords. Not that I don't like them. I just, I've never, never messed with them a whole lot. But I know the unibodies are kind of a sought after vehicle. Uh, let's see what you got. I've seen rust here. It's not too bad. It's buildable. Oh, is that an old Crown Vic uh, front clip? Yeah, I think somebody had thought maybe they would disc brake it and yeah, maybe put a fuel injected motor one of these days. But yeah, I think these cross members are pretty, pretty plug and play on these trucks. They work pretty good. Yeah, she's not real appealing. <laughs> <laughs> not two hundred dollars appealing. I just said five hundred. I'll come down to you. Two? If I can keep you out of trouble, I'll give you 200 for You may it. have saved my life. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, my name is Sammy Ham. I've been, since 2008, working on old cars, street rods, pro mods, uh, doing interior work, inside restoration. Uh, ran across Lance through a mutual friend. I know he collects a lot of these old trucks, so... We brought this one about seven or eight years ago from a guy out of Rockwall as part of payment on an interior job for him. Wife wasn't real happy about bringing that home. Uh, today it happened to me again. I got the old truck back from one of my customers in Clarksville as payment on a 55 interior. My anniversary is tomorrow, so I was kind of scared to take it home for the second time. And Lance looked like a good place to hopefully dump that off. If it had Almost. the hood on it whenever you come up here, I'd probably went ahead and gave 500. <laughs> yeah, don't say that. <laughs> All right, 200 cash, man. I got you 20, so at least looks like you got a little bit more. Right, I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate it. Free delivery, right? Yes. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, free delivery. All righty, man. I appreciate well, I'll, you, Lance. I'll do something with it. I don't know what, but. Uh, maybe it'll keep you out of trouble for sure. It'll keep me out of trouble. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for stopping by, man. You bet. See y'all later. We'll see, you. see you, man. Well, we had to wait overnight for these logos to dry, and uh, we've got them distressed now, and to me, they turned out great. They, you know, they got to look just what, what I was wanting to go for it on it. Uh, we've got her distressed. We've got the retro styles distressed as well. Uh, now we're just kind of going over the whole thing with the scotch bright, just to give it a sand where that rust can stick to it. Uh, we'll blow it off, clean it up real good. I'm going to shoot just a, some flat clear over the logos to kind of protect them as we're doing the rust that we do. Uh, but right now we're just going to run over it with the scotch bright, get it cleaned up, and uh, start from there. With patina style paint jobs, uh, they're all a little bit different. On this body line here, this Metro, it, it had a lot of uh, like cr crackly paint, just a lot of cracks in the paint that ran along this body line across the whole Metro here. Um, so we've got a way that we can recreate that crackle paint effect and I'm gonna show you what we use. I'm gonna have Dad, the next step on this is we're gonna tape off all the, the window rubbers and stuff. Uh, they've got a, they're old, they're going to be replaced anyways, but for right now we want to try to keep this as clean of a job as we can. So I have, I'll have him go around taping up everything, uh, but right now I'm just going to kind of show you how we do the crinkle paint on this body line here. To recreate this crackle effect, uh, what we use here is a crackle medium. Um, there's a lot of people, they'll use glue to do it. Uh, there's, I, I don't, I don't uh, consider myself an expert in this at all. There's a lot of people that do patina style paint jobs with airbrushing. I mean, there's just a lot of time and detail that can be involved in this. But this is just a crackle medium. You brush it on there, uh, kind of get a little sloppy and uh, staggery with your brush marks. That's what's gonna give it, to, it effect as it starts to crackle. Uh, once it dries, we'll come over it with another paint and then you'll start seeing the magic happen. Here in Texas, we've been having triple degree weather for about three weeks now. 
Uh, this thing is too tall to fit inside, so we've been having to work on it outside, which is no fun at all. Uh, we kind of wait until the evenings to, to, for it's cool enough for this product to work the way we need it to. So I'm trying to hurry up and work this all out. What I'll do next is I'll add um, just, some, just some Krylon flat black paint. I'm gonna go around the wheel well here across the bottom where the rust is typically a little darker. This will just be our first step. That's real easy, anybody can do this. So you just, um, you just start applying it here. We'll go with other colors as well after that. But this is just the first uh, ground step on it. There's really not a wrong way about applying this stuff. Uh, next, I'm gonna go with a brown color that'll kind of extend a little bit further on. And if you look at old vehicles when they're rusty, a lot of times they're just more rusty around this wheel arch here and across the bottom. This one's got this drip rail here where it probably would have you know, started to rust a little bit more up top here. So I add a little brown there. Um, I'll just play with these different colors just back and forth until I find it where I think I'm happy with it. Then we'll move on to our next step of applying the rust over that. It looks like our crackle medium is pretty much dry. It's dry to touch. Uh, what I've got here is just a little bit of red oxide primer mixed up. Uh, you'll brush it on top of that as well. Uh, there is a trick to this. When you brush it, try not to get too crazy with this. Just try to cover it all at once if you can. Uh, once again, the, the thinner you put it, the smaller cracks. The thicker you put it, you're going to have the bigger cracks. I'm going to try to get a big, big crack effect on this. So I'll, put, I'll wipe it on kind of wet. And uh, like I said, just don't try to overwork the area because then it just doesn't work as well. Well, I told you guys earlier that this Metro wouldn't fit inside and we've been slaving on it out here in the heat. Um, Dad just let me know that we have rain in the forecast for like a solid week now. And I really need to get this thing knocked out and get it finished. Uh, I'm right here in the middle of this thing, so I can't just stop and just, uh, just let it go. <sighs> Our door is eight foot tall. This metro is about a little over eight, eight and a half feet tall. So what we're gonna, the plan is we're going to get it up close to the door. We're going to take the back wheels off of it, lower it down just a little bit with the forklift, push it inside, and it'll be, we have plenty of height inside once we get it inside. That way we can go ahead and knock this thing out and just get it done for them. It barely fit in there, but we got it inside. Uh, I didn't even think we were going to be able to shut the door down on it, but it did work, so we got it in there. We've got the first few steps of this rust process completed on this thing. It hasn't changed a whole lot, I know. Uh, we've got the crackle paint done on the body line here. I've kind of went around the edges, darkening them up with just some black and some brown spray paint. Uh, what I'll do next is I'll go around it with our rust uh, paint that we use. Uh, I'll, I'll sponge it on in some places. I've used different stuff. I've used Walmart sacks, just different types of sponges, paint brushes. I'll spray it through my HVLP spray gun. Um, and there's just all kinds of ways. And once again, I'm not an expert at this. There's, there's lots of guys out there that are airbrushing this stuff. Turns out really cool, really wild. Uh, but this works really well for us. And uh, we'll just kind of show you what we use and, and how it works. What we have here is a two-part system on our rust the way we do it. Um, it's just a medium black base that we use and we mix an iron powder with it. Uh, what the iron powder is, it's just really crushed up small pieces of metal. 
Um, you can buy these. There's lots of different companies that make this. Um, it's kind of just, you know, they have different sizes. You want to go with something that's really fine though. We, we've got it mixed here in this base and it's waterborne paint. So you reduce it with water, of course. Um, if you're really wanting a dark colored rust, you're going to want the paint to be a little bit thicker. Uh, you can reduce it down to kind of make it a little transparent and it'll, it'll give you kind of a transparent rust where you can still see layers underneath it. What you're going to need to do is just kind of play around with it. Um, I, what I like to do is I like to put some dark spots on there just to give it like in some scratches, some, uh, just some really dark thick rust around it in places. Then I like to go over it with just kind of a medium coat just to kind of blend everything really well. But on this two part system you have your iron, uh, you have your iron particles inside the paint. And then what you have is an activator, which is just a, a copper salt um, activator is all it is. When it, when it reaches, when that copper hits that, the steel in that paint, it begins to form a rust. So in essence, it is a real rust, but it's in a paint form. Um, you're, it's, it's not gonna get any worse or make your truck rust through or anything like that. It's, it's just on the paint side of it. So what I'll do now is I'll start getting some different sponges. I, I have all kinds of different styles. You'll never have enough sponges. So if you just have, I mean, you could use a, a dishwashing sponge, whatever. Like I said, I've used uh, Walmart sacks, paint brushes. Uh, I'll use my spray gun. Just whatever works for you. Uh, it's just fun to play around with it and just see what you come up with. What I'm going to do now is go around the edges of this uh, metro here. Uh, I've just got a couple different sponges here. I'll use different techniques of putting it on. Uh, try to stay away from just doing a straight line with it because rust would typically never form that way. Uh, so I'll just kind of come up in some areas. Um, I'll use it wetter in some areas. It'll kind of give it a texture, a darker look, and uh, just really kind of Add, add some rust to this thing. So right now I'll start here, I'll work my way around, and then I'll kind of come up and add some to the actual sides here as well. This paint had already flaked off here, so I'm just using this brush to kind of follow along that line. Uh, that way it'll, it'll fill in that line and just be where rust would actually be on the thing. So I'm just kind of being careful, following that line. If you get and get over, over where you need to be, just take a wet rag and it'll wipe right off. What I'm going to do now is go over the sides of this thing. Right here is a lot of paint was chipped off. Uh, it would have normally been, it was rusty there. When we put the silver over the side of it, it kind of overspray went and covered it up. So I'll take a, just a small brush, go around these edges so it has a good clean edge to it. Uh, sponge it in there, brush it in there, whatever. I'll find some spots up here where I feel like it needs a little extra rust, some dark spots. And then I'll mix up uh, some rust in my gun, spray it around here, let it blend really well. Um, and then we'll just actually start the process of turning rust. Now I'm mixing up a little of this paint so I can spray through my gun. Um, I need it to be pretty thin to actually just spray through my base coat gun. Now you could use a primer gun, something that you know will allow thicker material to go through and spray it a little thicker. Um, I just need this to be thin and I'll go over the areas where I've sponged it and stuff just to let it blend a little further. It needs to be pretty thin in my gun so I'm going to add a lot of water to it to make it transparent. And be sure whenever you, you use your gun that you clean it really well. If you don't get this stuff cleaned up it will start to rust inside your gun. So be sure that you clean it out with lacquer thinner really good after you get through spray. I've got my paint mixed up in my gun here. What I'm going to do is go around all these edges where I sponged it on there, go around uh, the top, the bottom here. 
and it'll just allow this rust to kind of blend out here. Um, once that dries, I'll come back, I'll, I'll reduce this paint down just a little bit more, and then I'll just do a whole a light coat over the whole thing. Sometimes I like to go around the edges of these spots here where the, the, the darker rust would be, just because a lot of the times where this dark rust is, it'll tend to have lighter rust coming off of it. Um, so I'll go over that, I'll go over this crackle paint here, and uh, pretty soon it'll be turning rust on us. Now I'm just going to thin down this paint a little bit more and I'll just put a real light coat over the whole thing. Um, it'll work really well. It'll actually go over her logo and then we'll, we'll clean it off and it'll stay in the low spots, kind of leaving some rust stains here and there uh, to really add to the look of this thing just being really old. Now that we've let that first coat flash off, you need to let it dry at least about an hour. Um, with the humidity here in Texas, it's, it, this rust acts a little bit slower and it's very temperature sensitive. Sometimes it reacts really quick, sometimes it takes it overnight to do. So the humidity is really bad here right now. We're hoping it'll react pretty quick, uh, but you really just don't know until you start putting it on there. Uh, but what we're going to do here is just pour a little bit of this copper salt into the uh, paint gun. I'll spray a light coat on it, wait about five minutes, hit it with another light coat. And then you'll just let it dry off about 30, 40 minutes and you'll slowly start seeing it get the rust in the areas where we put the rust paint. It's about 1 a.m. here and we're, we decided we're going to call it a night. We've let this product flash off for about 30 minutes now. And as you can tell, it's, it's already starting to turn rust. We'll, we'll let it set overnight. It'll eventually keep turning a little bit more and more. Um, but like I said, I'm going to come back and add another coat. I'm not real happy with the top here. I don't like it to look like it's outlined or boxed in. So I have more, more rust up here to kind of take away from that. Uh, and once again, we're going to need to match it up with the front area here. Uh, but so far, this is the first step. It worked out just the way it needed to. We'll come back tomorrow and just finish it up. Well here we are at day two of turning rust and this kind of shows you what this product does after it sets overnight. Uh, it continued to keep rusting a little bit. Now what we're going to do is come back and add another layer of it. We'll go over it with the scotch Bright because you always need your paint to have a scratch to stick into so we'll go over this and if you know with rust, uh, if you've ever seen it on a vehicle, it's, it's very porous and kind of rough and just, it's just you can rub your hand across it and it'll come off. Uh, so we're going to get that smooth. We'll start with another layer on here. Up here at the top, I want it to have a little bit more rust across there. I may add a little bit more scratches here and there on it. And it's going to continue to darken up. But with it already having this base coat on there, uh, the second coat tends to activate a little bit easier. And it'll really start changing good on us. What I'm going to do here is I got just a little bit of base coat reducer. I'm going to put it on a rag 
and take off some of this rust where it's went over the logos here. We want these logos to kind of show up on this thing, but you also want them to be a little rusty as well. If I keep rusting over this the way it is, they're almost just going to blend right in with the rust and you're not going to be able to see them. So I'll just take a little bit of reducer on my rag here. Uh, clean it around, you know, just nothing, nothing trying to be too particular about it, but just clean it up a little bit. That way when I go with the second coat of rust, you'll actually be able to see it through. Now we're about to go over this with the second and final coat of rust here. Uh, on this, since I started panel painting it, it's going to be really crucial that I make this door match up with the front of it. Uh, the door to me is a little darker already than this back panel, so I'll go a little lighter on it. Uh, I'll go around some areas just to darken up the rust a little bit, and then I'll go over it with a full final coat as well. Um, this stuff will start changing it pretty quick, and it should give the look that we're looking for on this thing. We've let this flash off for about 30 minutes now, and as you can tell, it's darkened up a little bit, uh, but it's still just not the look that we're looking for. Um, if any of y'all have seen the first episode, you might remember us talking about the secret hurry up sauce. Uh, it's, there's really not that big of a secret behind it. There's more of a secret behind this two-part uh, paint that we use with the iron particles in it and the copper salts. Uh, what the secret hurry up sauce is, is none other than just regular old distilled vinegar. Um, a lot of people know with distilled vinegar, you can put it over bare metal and it'll make it rust. You can mix it with hydrogen peroxide and a little salt and it'll ru rust just within minutes. Uh, the problem with that is you're stripping your vehicle down to bare metal. It's actually causing the metal to rot away over time. It's real rust. Uh, this too is real rust. It's just on the exterior of the uh, outside on the paint. So it's not going to make your metal begin to rust and get worse. So now I'm just going to hit it with a coat or two of um, this vinegar and it'll start changing a little bit more. Well, we've got the first couple steps of the patina rust process completed now, and uh, this thing's going to continue to keep changing overnight. Uh, there's a few things that I'm still going to change on it. Uh, around the retro style logos there, we'll, we'll clean this rust off. To kind of give it a look, it'll, it'll show back that silver that's around it, and it'll kind of look like someone maybe cleaned the rust off to put these logos on. You'll also see the rust that's still on the logos, and there'll be some rust on her as well to make it look like they've just been on there for a really long time. So we'll just keep on working on this. Um, I don't consider myself an expert at this by any means. I mean, there's tons of guys out there that are just awesome at doing this airbrush patina work. Uh, but this is just, we just wanted to show you kind of the basics of what we're, how we're doing it around here. I mean, it's worked for us. It's, it's, um, it's definitely get you that rust look. And we're just gonna keep on messing with this. We'll go around finishing the rest of it. And uh, we hope to have this thing finished by our car show come September 1st, and uh, hopefully you guys can make it out and see it there. Who says cheaters never win?
I guess that was a hundred dollars well spent. You gotta be kidding me, man. Suckers!